good afternoon everyone i am dr riswan first year resident department of forensic medicine dy patil medical college navi mumbai so my topic today is a review study of medical legal aspects of forensic odontology in dental practice so first i will be emphasizing on some of the major points like the age estimation it's based on the clinical methods radiographic examination histological and biochemical methods and some of the costly restoration like crowns bridges root canal therapy etc help to assess the socio economic status of the individual as we all know like the permanent dentition it's 32 and temporary teeth it's 20 in number so we can estimate the age mainly based on the chronology of formation and eruption of tooth and is studied by muhammad ahad et al on the emerging application of dentistry in medical legal practice in forensic odontology suggests that the radiographic photos are of great importance and forensic odontology has a played a vital role in age estimation and another study by paul mahanda et al on forensic odontology and medical legal issues have also proven that the patients with optimal dental service it could be very beneficial to legal authorities during the identification process so it's like uh, on base of the sections like some of the ipc section section 88 uh, nothing is an offense if it is being done with a valid consent and the patient we have taken consent that it's being done in good faith as if patient has uh, for some root canal procedure or something like that patient is being given antibiotics prior to the treatment or if he has some heart disease or something like that he is being given informed consent that is we are taking informed consent from him that is he is able to understand the nature of condition complication of treatment etc next is the sex determination sex determination mainly it's based on the amel gene that is the amelonin gene and the female has two identical amelonin gene and male has two different amel gene so the sex determination this plays a major role by the morphological analysis that is a crown size shape and root length then the mandibular cusp shows maximum sexual dimorphism the legal part of sex determination is in the case of rape potency marriage identification etc so uh, a study conducted by ramakrishnan k et al on sex determination in forensic odontology suggests that the morphological analysis or the molecular analysis probably helps in the thorough knowledge and use of proper evidence from the forensic scene helps in the identification of the individual next is the child abuse so all forms of the child uh, abuse violence manifest usually in the orofacial region so the injuries can happen over the fractured anterior teeth fracture of alveolar bone then the laceration of labial and buccal mucosa then laceration to frenum bruises to lip face and neck etc so now the poxo act 2012 the latest amendment is the punishment has been increased from 10 years to 20 years and the maximum punishment is like uh, imprisonment for life so as a responsible dentist we should be able to recognize record report and refer that's the four r's which are being significant when it comes to child abuse so a study conducted by adro garacho et al on dentist attitude and responsibilities of the dentist on the sexual abuse it is essential for the dentist to collaborate among themselves to in like to increase the prevention detection and treatment of this condition and we should report this cases as soon as early to the like to the investigating officers or to the government as soon as possible like it will be under the ministry of family and child welfare like that we should report it so it's a helping for the mental stability of the children next is a sexual assault so sexual assault it plays a major role like Uh, we know that the bite marks are crucial in identifying the victim so the forensic odontologist is being trained for obtaining the proper impressions cast marks etc so the study on forensic odontology a new dimension in dental analysis by kp divagar has shown that the assailant has produced like the soft tissues in the mouth so the images of palatal and incisal surfaces of teeth may appear so the four different types of violences can occur physical sexual psychological and violence can occur in over the orofacial region so usually the bite marks are being seen bite marks are being connected with the sexual assault and usually the bite marks are or seen seen over the private regions of in case of female like over the breast portion in males over the uh, pineal portion 
So the bite marks are being assessed in case of sexual assault. Next is identification. So identification is by the positive identification mainly using the dental chart. So dental chart plays a major role in civil cases, criminal cases, in case of mass disasters, natural calamities, burns, etc. There should be a proper anti-mortem data. So the major like factor which is lacking in the case of identification is the lack of proper anti-mortem data. So there will be lack of anti-mortem data, insufficient information. There can be errors in records, then poor recovery of remains then no proper chart is being maintained, use of abbreviations, then alteration done to face, jaw or chin, or like any surgical, like any corrections or plastic surgery or something like that has been done. They come as like crucial factors in the case of identification. So a study on the role of forensic odontology in the identification of victims of mass disasters, it was being done by Givaram Prajabadi. So it, he has studied that the victim identification in mass disasters, it is basically, as I have told, it's based on the obtaining of the proper anti-mortem data, which is being obtained from the general dental practitioners. So the lack of anti-mortem data is a crucial thing, uh, which plays a major role in identification. In case of like natural calamities, burns, crush injuries, mass disasters, etc., we have been able to identify the people using the previous like previous anti-mortem data, which is available to the dentist. Then next is forensic odontology poisoning cases. So usually we do in forensic things, if a person comes with a suspected case of poisoning or something like that, we usually collect the viscera and send for the chemical analysis. So the viscera analysis report usually takes from one to two months or something like that, and it's, it keeps a delay. So we can't rely on that. We can rely on some findings which can still, but we send to the viscera for the uh, lab analysis. So we send various parts like stomach and small intestine, upper part of small intestine, each half of kidney, like that we send. So the some of the findings we will see, we'll be seeing if that uh, in a person with poisoning in forensic odontology, sulfuric acid causes trismus with yellowish spongy tongue, gums and buccal mucus and palate. Then organophosphorus can cause whitish discoloration over the mucous membrane and attach gingiva. Then arsenic, it mainly presents as hyperpigmentation, that is a raindrop pigmentation. Then boric acid mainly uh, causing cyanose of lips. So a study on oral manifestation of poisoning in view of forensic odontology by Dr. Abhirami Ardhanari have proved that there are various techniques which are being used for obtaining and interpreting the results. So it is mainly based on the forensic investigation. So usually we send the viscera for chemical analysis and the chemical analysis report, it takes time for getting the report so as to, so we do in suspected case of poisoning or something like that, we send the viscera for chemical analysis. This is an image showing the Bartonian line of gum, that is bluish line of gums, it is being seen. Next is bite marks. As I have told, in case of sexual assault, we usually take the bite marks. So even in case of like in Dharavad College, like SDM, uh, SDM Dental College, famous odontologist Ashit Ajarya had proved in case of uh, Nirbhaya rape case that five rape victims, the mold samples had been matched. So forensic odontology plays, odontologists plays a key role in uh, identifying the bite marks of the victim. So as I have told the way in identification, the way major drawback is the lack of proper anti-mortem data. So anti-mortem records can be obtained from dentists who has treated the victim. So the major thing is we have to take the salivary swab of the bite site, then take the bite marks, photographs are being taken. So a study on connecting forensic odontology among medical practitioners in central Kerala, it's been suggested that we are using like various knowledge of identifying an individual using facial bones, DNA analysis using teeth, bone, etc. So the medical professionals who are willing to attend the forensic odontology related awareness program will be able to identify and record the right data at right time. So as I have told, the forensic odontologist plays a key role in identifying the bite marks of the victim. And the sensational Nirbhaya case was being tracked with the help of Dr. Ashit Ajari, as I have told you before. The next is the grievous hurt. So something which is, uh, if, if a person loses his teeth 
or if a person there are eight clauses like emasculation is the first clause then grievous hurt for the for the teeth comes under clause five and clause seven that is the clause five is uh, we are losing the power of a joint so we grade the power from grade zero to five and the grade of the, the power of the joint is being lost and uh, then the fracture or dislocation of the tooth comes under seven seven clause so there are two clauses like uh, clause five and clause seven so the tooth fracture may manifest as the symbol loss of chip of enamel or loss of crown or complete avulsion. So whoever does an act with the intention of causing the grievous hurt like 321 or 322, the assailant may be punished. So the thing is like I have told you like the eight, eight clauses are there and these uh, clauses are being, uh, eight clauses are there under the fifth or the seventh clause of IPC 320, uh, grievous hurt comes. So a uh, tooth fracture can manifest under the grievous hurt. So these are my references. Thank you.